All right. Come on in. 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 Let's talk about it. H happy signing day to everybody, man. Listen, the signing day is officially over. We had the December one. Then we had the one today, which is February 7th. Listen, we want to talk about it. We want to briefly discuss it. I got a special guest. Listen, we, we bring in, this is what we're going to officially do with USCJ. We're going to start bringing in members, those who are connected, those who don't know. Uh, we got members that are connected that pay uh, every month, just contribute, whatever they want to contribute. And those that are, that do that, I want to start bringing them on every month. I want to start bringing them on maybe maybe even once a week. I'm going to start trying to go live. But, you know, we got one, we got Jamel. Hey, you want to say, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, man. My name is uh, Jamel. You call me JC, um, you know, from L.A., you know, big fan of the show, um, love USC football. And congratulations to all the to to all the recruiting class for this year. You know, super excited. Love some of the talent that we have here. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so as I stated, those who are coming in, Oscar's a member. Oscar, man, when are, when are you coming on? Oscar, I need you to tap in with me, man. Tap in with me. You should have been on here, man. I think I asked you before. Oscar, you got to be the next one. But listen, we got we got those that are members like Oscar, but we want to talk about this recruiting class. And one of the things that I want to talk about as it relates to the recruiting class for those who are coming in, uh, did we meet expectations? Did we exceed expectations? Or is it kind of right there in the middle, man? I want you guys to talk back to me as it relates to this. Eddie, man, I want you to come on here too, Eddie. You know I want you to come on here. Breaking news. Chip Kelly is interviewing for the <laughs> – Eddie, Eddie, uh, Eddie, man. Eddie, Eddie. Eddie nah. you tripping. Hey, come on, man. Why you going to do Chip like that, man? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I want Chip to stay at UCLA, man. You actually, know, Eddie it. was yeah. – yeah, Eddie was one of the first members that I actually did yeah. this with. You're the second one. Um, periodically, I'm going to bring guys on to uh, to come on. But Jay, yes, what's, your th what's your thoughts? On, because we 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 are talking about the recruiting, but we Chip Kelly, man, he may be possibly be out of there, man. What's your thoughts on that? Man, actually, I want him to stay because this brings us to how we were with Helton and how a lot of their fans are unhappy with with Chip and how things are being done there. And so they're kind of getting the taste of how you know we we suffered during the Helton years, man. And so um, actually keeping him there and and is. For me, I you know I, I I want him to stay. I don't want him to go. You know, right, I right. Stay there. I kind of want him to stay there too, man. Because right now they lost in the sweet and sour sauce. Bottom line, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. they lost in no, the sauce. Right. But yeah. but look, when we look at this class today, um, uh, when we concluded it, I, I know that, and, and it's the same way. I feel the same way about it that I felt last year. Yeah. Uh, twenty four seven sports on three. Those guys, all of them had us essentially. Uh, they had them. They had us way down, very underrated, and I felt like you know we don't we didn't really get our just due as it relates to the class, man. I felt like guys like Braylon Shelby, um, uh, 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 Sam Green, Elijah Hughes, all those guys that we had from last year, I felt like that was a very underrated class, and it's proven. So we see guys like Braylon Shelby really show flashes. We see guys like Elijah Hughes show flashes. So as it relates to that aspect of it, how do you feel about? this class being underrated, how do you feel about it being a number 17 class? Yeah, I mean, I feel good about the class because I feel like we have the staff to really develop the players that we do have. Uh, for example, like, I mean, Cameron Fountain to me is a, is a gem. You know, the All-American game, he, he balled out. I believe he had like two sacks that game. And I, yeah. I think that, you know, um, you know, Marcellus is going to to get some time, you know, as, as a freshman. He's, he's very, very skilled. And I feel like we have some other gems in the class that's going to be developed. So, you know, I understand that, you know, we all want the five stars and you got to understand, you know, I'm not going to I'm just go back to reference to kind of Michigan had the number. They had only one top 10 class within the last three years, but they developed their talent. So I feel we're in a situation where we can, you know, pick and choose certain players that have the, the frame, the size that we can really bring in and develop. And that's important. That's something that I think we, we was missing over the time we get some of these five stars in and they just, you know, they don't, they don't perform. So I feel like it's crucial now in Lincoln Riley heard it loud and clear that, you know, he needs to get the coaching staff together and really get some developers in here. Cause we have some talent here and I'm, you know, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised on how the team performs next year. hundred percent. No, you speaking absolute facts, man. I mean, we can have all the five, five star talent that we want. And in fact, last year, 
you know, that's one of the that's one of the things that I think had everybody lost in the sauce because you had guys like yeah. Phil Steele, a national analyst, who stated that uh, you know, he he projected USC to go to the playoffs. And you know, as a result, you know, and we were completely lost in the in the gravy sauce. I mean, <laughs> we could not we couldn't do anything. And so um I, I think that now that we got coaches that can develop, and, and not only just coaches that can develop, I feel like we got coaches that in every position. Every position group, we I believe Lincoln Riley hired the best possible candidate. And the yes. reason I say that is because you look at the caliber of guys, whether it's Eric Henderson, um, what he did over at the Rams, and you look dog like work. He, he, dog work. He got pro bowlers popping off over there. And then you look at what Matt Inch did, you know, three years in a row, you know, the big time coach at North Dakota State. And then you look, of course, Doug Belt. He coached guys up like Mika Fitzpatrick. At Alabama yes. so you know it, it was really and then of course he went to Houston so you look at what he did and then you couple that with uh you know the, the other guy Skylar Jones I mean he was just over there with Eric Henderson as well so it's go time all across the board man we got guys that can absolutely develop and I said this plenty of times you could tell me if you think this is the same type of situation Utah has always had less amount of stars than, than sure. USC yeah but for whatever yeah. reason they were able to produce plenty of plenty of talent and be able to maximize that talent the best of their abilities. And as a result, you've seen a pretty decent product on the field. Can we argue that USC currently has better players than U Utah has? And we got now equal, if not better, developers on the team? I agree with that. I, and, I, and I agree that, you know, even a lot of the times that our coaches, the, the, the opposing coaches always said that USC had the talent. It's not like we've not had talent there. It's just the talent wasn't being developed there. So I, I feel that, you know, even some people on the current roster right now are going to definitely have some big benefits of having, having some developers that will be able to coach. So I, I agree with that. I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of players that are going to step up and um, it's going to be an exciting year next year. I can't wait to the open of LSU. That's going to be a big test, but I'm excited to see what the team performs. I think De'Anton Lynn is going to um, – his philosophy and his defensive style is, is, is aggressive. They're going to be physical. We're going to finally probably have some tackling, some real physical practices, which we need. We need some physical practice to bring that physicality back. Um, I think that Lincoln um, – got an opportunity to really kind of see on how these teams are performing and how big they, they are, how big, how physical that they are. And we need to do that. We need to get back to USC, you know, physical football. When they come into that Coliseum back, especially in the Pete Carroll days, these would be fearful coming into that Coliseum. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We used to, they, again, you know, I think we're, we're, we're getting back to those days. We having people compete and, um, and, and competition always going to bring out the best of everyone and with the coaching staff and, and them pushing each other. I'm excited about how we're going here, and I'm excited with the direction of the team right now. Man, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And for those who are just coming on, I've done this a couple of times with those who are members. Uh, we got JC on here, and Oscar's in here. Brian Jenkins is on here. I brought those two on before. Those are members as well. And uh, this is something we want to do special for, for these guys, just showing you uh, my way of appreciation. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm always in front of this camera. I don't know who I'm talking to all the time, man. I don't know who I'm talking to. Everybody's typing, but I want to see who I'm talking to sometime. So, you know, this is a way that I can interact and communicate and see uh, who's on the other side of that camera who's typing. Man, I see a lot of names a lot of times. It's, it's like 100, 100 comments all the time doing videos, but I never know other than the guys that's come on who's behind that camera, man. But but realistic expectations now, this is, what I, this is kind of where I want to go to. What are the realistic expectations? Because I hear a lot of people say, Jay, um, this is a two-year, three-year project. But look, my thing is this. If De'Anton Lynn could do it with, with, with less talent, yes, they had Latu. I like Latu a lot. I, I give it, I give you that. And yeah. they had the other guy, I can't remember his name, who transferred over there from uh, from USC, the big defensive tackle. I can't remember his name. You might remember it. But um, he transferred from USC and then went to UCLA. Yeah. I can't remember his name. But anyway, yeah. they had a couple of guys. And my thing is, De'Anton Lynn took a team first year um, because you guys know the year prior to we beat UCLA, but he took a team the first year, had them ranked number 10 for the most part all year long in, in total defense. So my thing is, and they finish out number 11, what's the realistic expectation? You guys dropped those comments. I want to hear from you guys. Realistic expectation. JC, what's the realistic expectation for USC the first year? 
Oh, man. Um, I think it's going to be turned around pretty quickly, to be quite honest with you. I think that, you know, with the transfer portal the way it is now, teams could get better a lot faster, um, you know, like Michigan State did a couple of years ago when they, they got good really fast. So I think that there's opportunities with the with coaching. I think, again, I think our cupboard is not bare. I think they're coming in with talent that's already there that they just have to cultivate get them the Wiley is already running them on the beach. Jacoby, you saw that picture of Jacoby today. Man, he's he man. Like he put on some weight. <laughs> he looked you know like he looked like a, a freaking beast. monster. <laughs> man, he's gonna be a beast. And our skill position is there. Yeah, I feel we're gonna be great at quarterback. And I, you know, we have some upgrades on the D line. I, I feel that all the positions have been, you know, addressed. And we're gonna, I think we're gonna go out, uh, you know, expectations. Uh, you know, like Riley says, it's about championships here. And I'm not going to lower my expectations, but I do understand it takes time to build, too. You know, so if they don't make it to the playoffs or, or they, they have, you know, uh, some some bumps in the road next year, I know that at least we're heading in the right direction with the hiring. I think the hiring of this staff has established that, hey, we're serious about football, mainly to the recruits. You know, we, we miss on a lot of premier defensive linemen and stuff like that. Now we have, you know, some – some really credible coaches that can go and go into the living rooms and say, Hey, I've, I've, I've coached Aaron Donald. I've, I've put people in the pros and, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be big for us making this transition. So like I said, I'm excited. I'm not going to, I'm going to um, think about a little bit more how I, I feel is going to go next year. I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be LSU. Don't tell nobody. Like, I think we're going to be, <laughs> I, I think we're gonna be, I think we're going to yeah, be LSU. But, you know, but I'm not going to go too crazy, but uh, you know, I feel that, um, you know, our team is going to be, it's going to be, um, so very pleasantly surprised in what we're going to have next Let me year. get to this. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Hey, shout out to you for becoming a new member, man. Hey, I definitely, yeah. definitely appreciate yes, that. Winnie's, hey, shout out to you. Fight on, my man. Definitely appreciate you. And listen, um, the way I kind of want to do this, like I have with JC on here, and like I did with Oscar and Brian, um, those who are tapped in with me on Instagram or Twitter, you guys message me, let me know, look, Jay, I'm ready to come on. I'm a member. And then I'll I'll send you the link through there, and um, that way we can kind of coordinate it that way. And if you guys don't have Instagram or Twitter, we'll work it out some kind of way to where we make it happen, man. I may have to put the link somewhere else. So you guys just let me know. You just send me your email or whatever, and we'll make it happen, man. But uh, but this is what we're doing. And JC, to your point, um, I really I, I totally agree with you. So you talked about the line, and so my question is, I want to get back up to a comment up here because this was a very important comment he made a great great point where is he at here he is right here he says imagine if lincoln riley this is oh, ryan he, he says imagine if lincoln oh. riley would have made this decision last year it's, man i you know i totally agree and i was trying to give alex grinch the benefit yeah. of the doubt and but you know this thing just you know for whatever reason everything happens for a reason and i believe this is my opinion though ryan everything is timing some things we might have not got eric henderson at this this time last year yeah you, you yeah. get what i'm saying so you know, everything has to be about timing. We might not got Matt Inch this time last year. So, you know, I think everything happened at the right time. And as a result, I think we're really progressing in the right the right order. So, with that being said, always enjoy your show. Hey, appreciate you, my man. Really appreciate you. Much love to you as well. Um, Big Ten title, our offense is going to – hey, our offense is going to be outstanding. If our offense could pick up the same way they picked up, uh, at you know, when they play Louisville, listen – those guys are going to be lost in the sauce. Not only that, Taj Washington, did we see what he did to – well, no, that was Brandon Rice. To the Penn State receiver, uh, DB, listen, he had that guy look like he was on, on a skateboard or something, man. I mean, he just had him on skates, man. It was crazy. Um, but to your point, what you were talking about, uh, uh, the defensive line, do you think – do you think right now, if nothing changes, we know we have the second portal window coming up. If nothing changes right now – and I want to talk about this class too from uh, today from the official signing. If nothing else changes, do you think USC has enough what it takes right now? When we look at the defensive front right now, when we look at the offensive line, all aspects of it, is it enough? I think so. I think that once you know we get uh, uh, the D line and, and certain players at proper sizes, I think that you know Alex Grinch wanted players smaller and quicker, um, and so I, I think that uh, with you know, the proper uh, regiment that they currently have them on right now, I feel like we're going to have some positive impact on the defensive line. And we have some upgrades at linebacker as well. 
Uh, you know, our safeties are, are legit. I think we got some depth at corner. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very bullish on our defense for this year, you know. And and let me ask you something, man, and then back to this, you know, back to the recruiting class this year. I mean, how do you feel and what, who are you, you know, as far as who do you see in this class as far as potential gems? And then what's your overall rating of this class? My overall rating, I, I think it's a top 10 class. I don't care what nobody says, man. I know, I know they put it, at, they got it at number 17 right now. They did the same thing last year. Um, when you when you're talking about those guys that we've had, they were very underrated guys. But you know, when I look at guys like Elijah Newby, when I look at Cameron Fountain, when I look at guys like Desmond Stevens, you know, I don't understand how Desmond Stevens is not. They got him ready as a three star, but Desmond Stevens is a line. He's so we got so many players right now. Even the guys we signed today, uh, you know, we got guys that are uh, Jaden Walker. We got Jaden Walker, Elijah Newby, Desmond Stevens. All these guys are kind of like Swiss Army Knife players, man. Whether like whether you want to put them like a Sewer Cravens type of player, put them at safety, you put them on, you put them in the box, you put them at you know on the line. So I, I'm feeling very very excited about this class. And then we got guys like Braylon Conley and of course uh, the the Isaiah Rubin. I think Isaiah Rubin and Braylon Conley are kind of like the same kind of player. I absolutely love both of them, man. Both of them will come up and and, and pay a big lick to you. Um, so you know. I'm excited about this class. Uh, and then Jason Zandamela, uh, we got Makai Tiana, and you know we got this big old offensive lineman, six foot six, six foot seven, um, Henry uh, Trader. I mean, I'm feeling very good about this class. And, and the guys that we got to develop these guys, I really think that's even speaks more to where we could possibly go just this year coming up. We're not talking about the no little patty cake, patty cake baker man type guys. We got some guys that's going to come in there yes, and compete. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, some athletes. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Man, I love it, man. I, I love the flip that we had today for the Michigan State, uh, Jaden Walker. I, I love his potential, what he can be. Um, also from, uh, what was that, uh, Ratumana? I hope I pronounced his name yeah. right. Uh, from yeah. Washington for the Washington Committee. I mean, I think that, you know, we have some depth, and these guys are big guys, man. So I love that, you know, with the coaching staff that we have in here, they go to work, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on. I can't wait. I wish that Lincoln Riley would give us some access so we can see some practices and see how physical they are. But I understand he don't do that. So, you know, but um, I'm excited on how you know it's gonna turn out for next year, man. Yeah, that, that I, I totally agree with you 100. percent And uh, one of the let me answer this question. This is from Oscar. Oscar says. What freshman has a chance to start on each side of the ball? That's a crazy, great question, Oscar. You got everybody lost in the sauce hey, right now with that question. But I, I'm gonna say this. Let me. I'm gonna say this. Woo! That's a loaded question, Oscar. Yeah, I think. I, I'm, I, mean, I hate I'm, to jump on I'm, you for that. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I think Marcellus uh, Williams could, could potentially get some minutes. Yeah, you know, I think. I think he's. He's for me. I think that's that's the guy for me. That on offense. Be, yeah, Marcellus on defense or who on, on defense on, on defense. Who you got on offense? Um, I don't know, man. Let me let me let me let me ponder on that for a minute, man. I'm so hyped up with, yeah, the, with yeah. this defense right now, man. I'm so hyped up. The with defense is the I defense think. is loaded. Oh, I'm gonna say it's kind of hard not to say Marcellus, but I'm gonna let you have Marcellus. I'm I'm gonna say, man, that's kind of hard because I, I like a lot of these guys. I think a guy like Elijah Newby, so athletic. I'm gonna say either Elijah Newby. I, I kind of want to have a one A and a one B, or Cameron Fountain. But my thing is, you got Jamil Muhammad that's playing it. I don't know if Cameron Fountain, if they're gonna, if he's gonna grow into a defensive end or a a, a Russian. I know he's playing. They projected him to be Russian, but yeah. man, I'm, it's hard to think. I I, I really yeah. think Elijah Newby maybe. I'm gonna say Elijah yeah. Newby, maybe, maybe the one guy I say on defense. If I just had one guy to pick, it'd be Elijah Newby. And on offense, I got two guys there as well. I'm gonna say Brian Jackson. I, I consider him to be Lindell White type of running back. That dude's mm -hmm. a beast. I don't know if you ever seen him play for McKinney, Texas. I'm gonna say him or maybe Jason Zandamilla, uh, for uh, you know, big offensive lineman. He could possibly come in there. He was like one of the top rated guys. Let me get this super chat. Hey, shout out to you. Thank you. Alex, man, I oh, appreciate nice. you, man. Yeah. Big, Dope. big shout out to you, my man. Fight on, fight on, fight on. Hey, listen. So I, I really, uh, yeah, that so those are those are those are pretty tough. Those are tough questions, but I think that really speaks more to the quality of this class, man. Hey, shout out to you. What's up? What's up? Um, uh, the quality of this class more than anything. 
Um, Adam, our offense was dynamic last year and the best conference in the nation. I totally agree. Yeah. Imagine yeah. what they do in the big. Hey, man, you know, and Alex, to your point, I totally agree. Did you want to say anything on that before? I, I got a lot to say on that. I'm going to let you say you, <laughs> <laughs> you got anything? No, you as far as the tight end, I mean, as far as offense, I mean, we got some big tight ends. I mean, Walter Matthews is six seven tight end, man. I mean, we got some – we got some skilled people um, on offense, but our offense is already kind of loaded already. But I think that we're going to work in some freshmen for this year for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, here's my thing with that question. You said, you says, imagine what they could do in the Big Ten. Oh yeah. I, I don't think, and and I think that we could flip that on the other side as well. I don't think our defense is going to have to come up against any type of offenses that we had to face this year, like a Oregon, like a Washington, like a Arizona. I, you know, I just don't think they pose that type of threat. Um, no. But with that being said, I think our offense can be very, very dynamic. I think Lincoln Riley's creativity, the same way that everybody says that we have to suggest that we have to adjust to the Big Ten, I think they're going to have to adjust to oh, Lincoln yeah. Riley's style of playing, play, uh, playing. Just like we're recruiting for the big, I think in turn they're going to have to do the same thing. They're going to have to recruit for Lincoln Riley's style offense because they're not going to be able to get away with that just that slow motion stuff all the time. It's yeah, just, I think I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we average over 40 points uh, this yeah. year. So I think that, yeah. you know, teams like Iowa that, that scores like nine points and they have a great a good <laughs> defense and stuff, that's not going to work. And they can, no. you know, make make certain, you know, statements about our team. And, you know, Coach, you know, Riley is going to put that in his back pocket when, for when we see Iowa too as well. But, you know, I, I feel that, you know, our dynamics of, on our offense are going to create a lot of problems with the Big Ten. So I'm excited to, you know, when we get in there and see what we're going to do, man. We're going to put up some points for sure. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Any news on Taylor? I, I haven't heard anything on um on him yet, on Coach uh, Taylor Mays yet. Um, I, I think he's still there. I mean, from what I heard, I mean, have you? I haven't heard anything as it relates right. to that, and I hope he's still there. Yeah. Emmanuel, Elijah Newby should be – Absolutely. And that's what I mean, man. Like these guys that we got, there are a lot of guys that should be five stars right now. Um, but, you know, they do it year in and year out uh, for whatever reason, man. And I saw where, who was that? There was a recruit that got bumped up. Somebody said, Jay, did you see, uh, it was another, it was a recruit that's going to another school that they put him up there as a five star. And I said, he was just a four star all of a sudden that he's not leaning toward USC. Yeah. But, I mean, we see that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't get happy about – hey, hey, don't get happy, but I'm going to get happy for you. I promise you that. I'll get happy for you. And, look, just sit back and watch. There's going to be some development, man. I'm not yes. saying that – I'm not saying the expectations should be higher, uh, but I'm saying, like, given the fact that everything that we dealt with this year, and if you look at – if you examine the player, player by player, and if you examine each player – and you look at them, just say, look, how does this player play? How's his skill set? How is his development? How does he how does he translate right now to the college football game? You cannot tell me that you said you're not. I need you to I need you to make a comment back in here. Hit me back. If you watch each player and you watch them, tell me how does that translate in your opinion, player by player. Don't even look at the number of the class. Just look at the player by itself. JC, any thoughts on that? No, man, I think, again, you, you bring up some good points, man. I, I feel that, you know, I think that, you know, and there's definitely a correlation between five stars and going pro and so on and so forth. But I believe that. Jay kind of froze up for a minute. It's OK. He kind of froze up for a minute. Oh, but let me, you back? OK, OK. You, your, your camera. OK, there you go. There you go. I All see right, you now. Cool. Yeah, no, like I was saying, that I think that, you know, I'm looking at the individual players and their performances, and I feel like we have some really good gems in here. I know that, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, Michigan only had a they, – they won a championship. They only had a one top ten class in the last three years. So I know that's yep. in, it's important, but I believe in development is something that we've been missing, you know, is development. Big time. And you, you're you absolutely right. In, in, in fact, even after the national championship, uh, Michigan is number 16 – they were number 15 or 16 last year. So yeah. this is this is an ongoing thing. Michigan has had, as he stated, and I brought this up to you guys before, they've had only one top 10 team in the past few years. So this is an ongoing thing, but they had master developers. What Jim Harbaugh was able to do to maximize these guys' talent, I mean, it was straight up go time, man. No, no. Oh, yeah. Renee, let me get to your comment, Renee. I, I totally – Marquise Gallegos is absolutely yes. one of my favorites in this class. Forgive yes. me for not even thinking about – but that's yeah. – 
that speaks more to the quality of these players. When you look at Marquise Gallegos, when you look at Braylon Conley, when you look at Isaiah Rubin, when you look at all these guys, Marcellus Williams, these are quality. These are four stars. We have 13 four stars throughout this class. These are quality four stars that I think even Jarvis Boatwright, I'm for, I forgot him um, out of the state of Florida. He could have went to Florida State, but Jarvis Boatwright decided to come to USC. So we got quality guys, and I think that really – that's what I want everybody to do their due diligence and really just go down the line. I make these videos almost darn it every day about these guys, and we got quality guys, so we just got to really look at it and see exactly who we got. Um, yeah. Anything you want to say on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that in, in, in back to Marquise Gallegos, I mean, I think that he he always wanted to be a Trojan, and, and that's something that's important is that we got we recruited players that want, want to be, to be Trojans, yeah. that want to be here. It's not – I know NIL is important, and – and so on and so forth. And I, I'm not going to be mad at what people need to provide for their family. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, these guys wanted to be Trojans. And so that's what I'm excited about, too. People that want to be here, want to get developed, and want to want to be want to be proud to wear that uniform. Yeah. Hey, I totally agree. He said, Jay, don't spin it. Number 17 is not going to... Listen, I'm not saying that number 17 is, is the standard. I think you get it mixed up. Number 17 is not the standard. But here's what I'm going to say. If you look at the players, forget about the number. Look at the players. Is it is it a player on there? I need you to tell me. Start off with one player for me. Eli I'm just going to give you two players, Elijah Newby and Cameron Fountain. I need you to drop some comments down there. Tell me how they match up with other players that are on Oregon, how they match up with other players that are on Alabama, how they match up with other players that are on Texas. I need you to drop some comments right now. Let me know in the comment section. Tell me, yeah. tell me a couple of players that you feel like that are better than them. And and let me add on to something. We're not going to always have an outside top 10 class. Let me put it to 2025. I feel we're going to have a loaded class. That oh, year. man. Well, 2025 is going to be loaded. I think they're, as you can see, I mean, they've been out recruiting. They've been working their butt off. The staff has been out recruiting, you know, uh, getting these relationships going. And so I feel I feel very bullish on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree with you. Hey, Christian, shout out to you, man. Hey, thank you for the super chat. You said USCJ, you was right. Uh, you said stay patient. This class is filling out. Yeah, it's yeah. filling out nicely. I like it. Yeah. And listen, I don't think – I think that we're right now at 81 scholarships or something like that. Um, I think, you know, the scholarship limit is 85. So, listen, the transfer portal, we could possibly get some more yes. after the transfer portal. So, if if I were to say, JC, if I were to say to you, we got four spots to fill. What are the four spots right now you would like to see us attack in the transfer portal if we had that opportunity to do it? You know, I still have, you know, my fingers crossed with some D linemen, to be honest with you. And, yeah. and you know, there's been some coaching changes that we're all aware of. And, you know, and so we'll, I think after the spring ball, we're going to see some more of that address. I, I definitely feel like we need to address some more on the D line. Um, you know, I, I'm, 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 firm believer the trenches man get the offensive line and defensive line right now i think we have good skill position i think our secondary is looking pretty good so the trenches man load up on that i feel the same way i hear some people say receiver and running back i feel like you know. if we keep the, if we got if we just do it with the receivers we got now i yeah. think we good even with running back i i'm, I'm comfortable with that yes. um but i want to read a comment and, and i want to address this this is a lot this is a comment from a video i did earlier today and this is a fan. This is Patrick Welch. He left this comment today. He says, Jay, an article. I want to hear your thoughts on this. He said, Jay, an article out today by the sports app on interviews. They did the top 100 recruits in the NIL contracts. And they, they were all anonymous. He said the top was $1 million and the low was at $75,000. Most, most had conditions, but some had no conditions. And then he asked the reason they signed. Most said yes, it was because of the NIL. Listen, I'm gonna make a statement, and I want to know your thoughts on this. I don't know if, if if people really realize how serious this NIL stuff is, and and you you guys gotta understand. We looked at the situation that went on with Tennessee, the violations that went on with them, and all the stuff that's taking place, the uncertainty. We 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 got Jen Colton Cohen that really kind of reconfirmed that, look, they, they want to take their time. They want to make sure that everything's done right. You know, what are your thoughts on that? As, as you know, when you hear that comment um, from these anonymous guys that said, look, we did go to school because of the NIL situation. Well, I, like I said, I agree with you that, you know, 
we're, we're being very patient. I mean, we're still have the remnants of, of, of being hit with those sanctions from, you know, many years ago. And so I think USC has taken a very cautious approach um, when it comes to that. So um, as you mentioned before, there's Tennessee that's been, you know, hit. Then there's, I believe, Florida State and other schools that are that are getting in trouble um, behind it. So I think they're being very patient right now. And the players that we have right now want to be Trojans. And, I, and, and that's what Lincoln wants to get players yeah. that want to be Trojans. And that's what – and that's what we should get. We should get players that want to be here for the right reasons to get that degree from USC, to get the to be a part of the Trojan family, the life after football, you know, the networking, those the, the benefits of being a USC football player. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I think I think that's the biggest thing right now. Um, oh, actually, John, actually, when you go on, um, if you go on, it's it should say it should say member when you go on YouTube and. Let's see, let's see, let's see. John, you let's see. I don't have it pulled up. But when you when you go on there, it should say member. If you go on the home screen, you can scroll over. It says become a member. And sometimes some people told me they can't do it from their iPhone. It does have issues with iPhones, but it does have it does it is unless you could change it to desktop. Some people are able to do it on the desktop um a little easier than iPhone for whatever reason. I just found that out. I found that out from a current member right now named Oscar. He's had trouble with that as well. Um, so look, we'll answer a couple more. Oregon has a nice class and still won't do They won't. That's they right. won't do anything. You're That's absolutely right. right. And if you That's remember, right. the new coach that just came over, uh, he did make reference. He said, I can't remember the quote, quote that he said. What did he say? He said, if you want to be, what did he say? Uh, computer, computer champions or something like that. <laughs> He, what's his name? I, um, the new coach that just came over from Oregon. Um, oh, man, I can't think of it right Skyler now. Skylar Jones. Skylar Jones. He said, if you want yeah. to be computer champions, I can't. Somebody knows that quote. But you're right. They won't develop the way they they won't develop the way they're supposed to develop um, because they don't have the coaches that we have. And, um, you know, speaking of development and speaking of coaches, let me just bring this up. And, Jay, I want to hear your point on this. Michigan coach, um, we just found out. We just found out that Michigan defensive line coach is gone. He's going with Jim yeah. Harbaugh and yeah. the defensive analyst. He's gone. Yeah. Does this leave an opportunity for a guy like Mason Graham and the other guy? I can't remember his name. Those two big bodies. Listen, I think we got an opportunity, man. I'm not saying tamper. <laughs> no. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not yeah. come here where we have a proven D-line coach you know, here already, you know, you, you, you're, you're from Cali, you know, come back home, you know, yeah. I, you know, I know it's not, you know, but you know, there's, there's, there's changes, you know, Jim Harbaugh, you know, um, coming to the chargers and bringing Mike mentor, his defensive coordinator, bringing his, he's pretty much taking his staff from Michigan yeah. over to, to the chargers. So it's, you know, if it's a, about, being developed and going to that next level, I don't see why no one would come and play for Eric Henderson. It's just me it's no reason why you can't. It does, especially with your whole with your whole staff being rated. You know, my thing is okay. You you might as well come home. I mean, you might as well get developed under the best. Um, yeah. Shout out to Carter Carter Sports. He was up in here. I, I can't remember where the comment went, but um, I will be. I think sometime this week we will be doing a show together. He's making a lot of videos, man. He's he's a local product as well, and uh, yeah. we will be getting together, man. So big shout out to Carter. Um, man, to who, to who are you? Uh, we got big rhino and big bear on that D line. Yeah, we do. We do. Jamil Shelby and Jamil Muhammad. We got corners and safeties and linebackers. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I just think we're more stacked than what a lot of people think, man. Yeah, um, the 100%. linebackers class we got this year is highly underrated. Hey, totally yes, agree. 100%. Newbie is better than, hey, I, you know. Hey, newbie's legit, man. He runs a 10-9 yeah. in the 100 meters. And I don't know, you know, I don't know how if people realize how athletic he is. KVA is a beast. You know, I'm not it to, to comparing certain yeah. high athletes, but but yeah. I'm gonna say this. Um, I think he's just as good. I really do. I think he's right there. I think he's neck and neck. That's just my opinion. And I know he can get to the ball very, very fast. Most of most faster than a lot of linebackers in the country, and that's serious. Yeah. Serious yeah. business, man. Your your thoughts on that? 
KBA. No, I agree with 100%. Percent. Yeah, I agree with 100% that you said, you know, and, and, yeah. and then with the coaching that we have, is just going to really enhance and he put on some size and with that speed. Oh, man. And, and yeah. D'Anton's land system. Yeah. Oh, man, this is going to be. Uh, and I'm so yes. excited, man. I cannot wait the spring ball to happen. I cannot wait to see this team perform. I'm not going to do it because I, I, I pro, you know, I don't want to do it to the athletes. I, I feel like they, I want to give them a time, you know, opportunity to compete. And, but, but did you have a, a starting five that you, I mean, I said starting five, like we playing basketball. <laughs> uh, did you have some starters that you thought that will be out there, man? Like what would be your starting lineup if you just had to pick one? For the if D? you just had to pick one, I'm not ready to do that yet because I, I do the show every day. So I'm going to give the, if you just had to start, I just want to hear what your, what your thoughts, initial thoughts was on defense. If you just say, I'm, I got some starters. This is what I think will, will happen. This is how I think it's going to look. No, nah, you know, I'm not ready to go there because I feel like they should compete. I think that I feel the know, same way. At the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, by having a predetermined kind of set, I think that's something that, you know, fans kind of felt over the, last couple of years that maybe you know certain players didn't you know deserve to kind of be in those certain roles so i think that you know with the players that we have now and, and new staff and new eyes we got to bring it back to how you know you compete for the job you know you compete Absolutely. to get the, the Nothing position should be so, a given man yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know at the end of the day you know they have to go out there and earn it uh, there's definitely some players that you know I, I i see out there that i that i feel pretty good about but I want them all to compete and I want them to determine, you know, who it is like, like going, going back to Pete. And that's what brought me into really USC was loving that era of football competition Tuesday and, and the best players play. I love that, man. And so we, I think we're going back to the essence of physical practices and having people compete for those starting roles. No, I totally agree with you. And I, I told myself, I said, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore. I said, I, I kind of did these guys, um, I kind of did that last year. Tried to. I got over. You, sometimes you get over zealous. You get excited, and I kind of felt like that. But I said, you know what? This staff, with this staff and these guys that we got coming in, yeah. I said these guys are not gonna have no type of partiality. They're not gonna show no type of partiality. They, they gonna allow these guys to compete. I believe. And you gotta remember, we got guys like the, the Arnold brothers. We got Ramsey. We got yeah. uh, the Carlos Nicholson that came from Mississippi State. We got yeah. Humphreys that came from UCLA. Like, this thing is about to really get cracking in a way like we have probably hadn't seen this competition go in a long time. So it would be horrible for me to really put that information out there and say, look, this is what I think it's going to be because you got guys still on the air side, um, like Jamil Muhammad, like a Braylon Shelby, guys that's coming in. You know, I, you know, I don't want to limit those guys. And then on the other side, you still got Solomon. You got – you got uh, – you got Anthony Lucas. Look, this thing is about that. You got the new guy, Nate Clifton, coming from Vanderbilt. So it's yeah. so much, it's so much activity going on within this this roster right now. These guys are going to compete. And listen, I say it like this: May the best man win. That's how I've said. Absolutely, absolutely. You have a great, you know, competition. Have great practices, and it's iron sharp and iron. You know what I'm saying? So you know, the, the, the more the physical practices are and, and they get to compete with each other for starting spots. And I think that, you know, even if you may not, you know, get that starting row, I feel that they still going to give you some time. I think the rotation is going to be there for the D line. I think they're going to rotate people in and out. So I think people that deserve to play is going to get some, some time to play. And I, yeah, I, I totally agree. I like the rotation aspect of it because that way everybody gets the opportunity to play. 100%. That way every, yeah, everybody gets to stay fresh it kind of, I think it'll limit some of the, you know, the activity as far as um, injuries is concerned. Um, a ball, you said this defensive staff will have 20 plus defensive alignment to move and groove around and develop. Totally agree, man. Hey, I totally yes. agree. Totally agree. Yes. Tim, what's up, my man? Tim, Tim, Pr Tim Frankly for the voice of college football. What's up, my man? How's everything going, man? Hey, tap in with Tim. Tim will be on on Friday night, man. Tim says, newbie, hey, Tim. But so is KV. Yeah. And that's what I I yeah. think they neck and neck, Tim, to be honest with you. Um, newbies are absolute monster. I think they kind of neck and neck. But I know you're a St. John Bosco guy. You're alumni, man. So I know you're going to represent for <laughs> KVA. I know you are. But I love KVA. Yeah. I got big love for him, man. Yeah. Um, if I had to say one sleeper, give Graham, please give Graham the bag. Oscar, you're right. Give Graham the bag. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's way – Graham and – what's the other guy's name? I can't remember the other guy's name. Let me get to this super chat. 
Hey, hey, Jenna Cox. Hey, appreciate you very much. One ninety nine. Um, thank you very, very much, Michael. Mike, what's the word, my man? What's the word? Talk about the September first, man. This is a guy, <laughs> man. This this is a guy. This is my buddy, man. He yes, is. Uh, he's from Louisiana. He's an LSU guy, man. Shout out That's to Mike. Cool. He says, uh, will SCB lost, <laughs> lost let in the me, stars? No. Hey, man, let me tell you something. We already talked about that, but yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. We're about to put the smack down on LSU, partner. I'm going to tell you that right now. We are about to put the smack down on LSU, man, big time. Elijah Newby should be a five-star, absolutely. So, look, with that being said, if I had to say, give me one sleeper from this class um, on defense, one sleeper on offense, I think we kind of said that. But, but, well, I said starter, but who's a sleeper? Who's a sleeper that nobody really talks about on the offensive side? Nobody really – I know that's hard. Nobody really uh, talks – you got to pull that – if you got to pull that class up, man, pull it up. I kind of got one of them in my mind already. Um, anybody that you think that may be a sleeper that you just – nobody's talking about. That nobody's talking about? Oh, man. Jeez. That's a great question, man. Um, I, I I still that no one is really talking about. Uh, I can't think of anything right now. I'm, I'm still going to stay with you know with with, with Fountain. I still think him on defense. I think he, his pass rushing is 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 elite. Yeah, and I know he's not you know much of a sleeper right now, but I, I really like what he can bring to the table. And you know I'm gonna go with the with the running back too as well. On I love him, man. Well. Ryan Jackson, he's you know um, you know physical guy. So you know I'm a, I'm gonna go with those two. I'm gonna say on on defense. He, he I actually interviewed him. That's Carlo Jones out of Texas. He's a big body man. He told me um, off camera he was 290, and I think he could easily be up to 300. I think if that guy could penetrate the way he was penetrating, the way I saw. In, in high school, man, at Bay City High School, I, I really think Carlisle Jones can really do some special things and really be in the rotation. I'm not saying be a starter, but he could be yeah. next to Bear coming in that rotation. We talked about yeah. that when I interviewed him on this show, uh, but I think he could be an absolute beast. And then I think a guy like Xavier Jordan, he could be a little sleeper too yeah. as a receiver. He's a very crisp receiver, man. So those are, those are kind of the two guys. I'm going to get to some of these questions before we shut it down. Look, it's been 42 minutes. Look, time goes by when you're having fun. It, we didn't even realize. We hey, Look, I said maybe 30 minutes, but here we are. <laughs> we lost in every sauce imaginable. Yeah. And uh, this thing is uh, is absolute, absolutely incredible. Andrew, I'm going to oh, call yeah. him Manna. I'm going to call him Manna. Should be playing time. Yes. Hey, listen, yes. I, I made a mistake. Well, I'm not even going to say a mistake. 24-7 sports and on three both had him listed at 260 pounds. I found out on the Washington site, somebody directed me to that. They said, Jay, they said it in my comments when I made the video. They said he's 290 pounds. I went up and looked at um, – I looked at Washington. They got him at listed at 285, actually. But that guy's already big, man. That's crazy. I yeah. mean, he's that big yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you feeling warm and fuzzy. Hey, look, man, we all – right now, we feeling good about this thing. I, I yeah. feel good. Listen, I'm telling you, I really – feel good about this sc for life let the haters underestimate oh hey I, i'm tired of look the haters can do what they want to do they are lost in the sweet and sour sauce if that's what if that's how they want to be god bless them but listen we we're going to take you back in once we get to moving and grooving because i believe this thing is going to be able to move and groove man trust me yeah tim said off the field let me get to this super chat real quick that's right kenneth grant that's absolutely right i could not remember his name i'm gonna get to this super chat Hey, Jenna, thank you. Thank you very much, Javonna Cox. Thank you very much. You said another one. I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you for that. Uh, Ray John Davis going, hey, absolutely. Man. I'm, I'm, hey. I'm a Ray John guy, man. Yes. Uh, hey, listen. Time. I love the speed, man. I love the yeah. speed. And yeah. 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 I, 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 I can't wait to these these coaches. Like I said, we got we have some we have some players there already. So when these coaches get a hold of them, man, watch out. Watch out. I'm not sleeping on Rajon. I'm not sleeping nope. on Eric Gentry anymore. No. Nope. Uh, well, I never was, but I'm just saying right now with this coaching staff, I, I, it looks like Eric Gentry gains some weight. And to your point, JC, you yeah. said you said um uh, talked about Jacoby Lane. 
Look, man, Jacoby Lane looked like he picked up 15 pounds. I don't know Ooh. what kind of regiment he's been doing. Marquise Gallegos, he picked up, I want to say, 10 or 12 pounds. So to all those people who said that Benny Wiley, let me get this message out there real quick. There were a lot of people that were talking about yes. Benny Wiley should not be the strength and conditioning coach. Let me get yes. this clear right now. Yeah. Jacoby Lane has picked up about 15 pounds. He looks incredible. I should have put that picture on there. Yeah. Uh, Marquise Gallegos picked up about 12 pounds since he's been there. So these guys are picking up weight. It's all about how you structure the plan. And I, I'm connected with the meal plan uh, to what they're doing. And these guys are absolutely – I see it. Every, I see the whole schedule. These guys are absolutely eating. Listen, there were directives given to Benny Wiley uh, coming from um, Alice Grinch to keep these guys – you guys know Anthony Lucas lost a bunch of weight. So now these guys yeah. are doing it the way that the current staff wants it. Now we're starting to see these guys move and groove. You had anything you want to say on that? No, I agree 100%. There's been a lot of Wiley slander definitely over the years, over the recently because of, you know, but again, he was given directives. You know, Alex Grinch wanted them, you know, smaller. So, you know, yeah. from my understanding. So, you know, um, he's he's right now we're seeing a, a change and in, in, in it's showing right now on the videos and that we're seeing of uh, players uh, making gaining weight on that. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, John, let me know if you found that. John, yeah, let me know if you found that um, that member thing should be on there. Right on the home page. <laughs> 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 hey man, you be saying some crazy stuff. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> hey, 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 just eat. That's all you got to do. Raise your going to strike. Absolutely. So listen, man. We just want to tap in. Listen, for those who don't know, uh, those who are members, um, I, you know, to me, it's a way of showing my gratitude, appreciation. Uh, yes, like he, like he's here. To, JC's here today. I'm gonna be bringing on members periodically. Make sure you guys tap in with me on Instagram or or uh twitter that way you guys can direct message me on there um i don't want you guys putting your numbers out in the chat it's too many people that see this so we could just kind of do everything in private that way i can send you guys the link and uh those who are members man you guys can tap in with me man this is it, it, it's fun look man jc you see you see jc got plenty to say man he he knows just as much as everybody else all of us love this children family man and so yes, it's sir. much love and uh yeah. And hey, look, I appreciate all the children. Fellas. I want to see, not only do I want to hear you guys' voice, I want to see you guys' faces. <laughs> yeah. I want to see yeah. you guys, man. Yeah. So look, man, make sure you guys, Jay, we are rising real dogs and raising real dogs right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, we are. We, we yeah. are, man. I totally I totally agree with that. Raise boom boom. Fight on, Jay. Fight on. Re LSU has lost their two open. Listen, man, they, they have. They lost against, I can go back, they lost against UCLA. Do you remember when they had Matt Charbonnet? They lost against Florida State two years in a row. They're absolutely lost in the sauce. I'm sorry. And uh, we're coming out swinging. What are these media haters talking about? Wow, we have so many players. They, they, you know what? You know what's funny to me? I saw them today. I saw them, and I'm going to let you guys go. I saw them praising Texas A&M class. Now, Texas A&M class, mind you, they got the number 20 class in the country. But you want to praise them. But they just really skipped over us all the way. I, I saw it today, man. I, I took notes. I said, you know what? I feel some type of way about the way they did it today. But you know what? Yeah. We, we didn't hear nothing about USC at all today. Yeah. Rarely heard anything about that's it. That's okay. But, but yeah, but that's but okay. That's cool. we, we, we working in silence, baby. We working in silence. We yeah, absolutely. Together. Absolutely. If the defense gives the offense five extra possessions per game, we would be, hey, contenders, I totally agree. I, we got 192 people in here right now. Everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, man. Everybody make sure they tap in. I love that we are focusing on defense and we are getting some good young talent. We already have the offensive players. Leaking. Listen, I totally agree. If the offense doesn't do anything else, if the offense doesn't do any, if they, if all we have to do is finish off the way we finished last year, I think we are just fine. Hey, Jay. Um, and that, that's the truth. Man, with, with the, the 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 kind of coaching that we have on defense right now, it gives Riley just opportunity to really focus on offense and really, you know, open up the playbook now. So I think that, you know, with the with the staff that he does have right now, man, he's gonna really be able to focus on offense. And I think we're gonna I think we're gonna be very dynamic next year. Very dynamic with the dynamic, man. 
I think we're going to shock a lot of people, man. Yeah, we, we just, 100%. I think the best thing at this point is just to really kind of stay humble and just keep and keep the focus, man, because I, yeah. I just think th these coaches, these are not no patty cake coaches. These coaches no. are very, very no. serious about the way they handle their business. Jamie, no. fight on. Hey, Jamie, where's your partner yeah, at, man? Ask your, Jamie, ask your partner, is he jumping on the train, man? I know he jumped off, but ask him if he want to jump <laughs> back on. Fight on USCJ. I'm happy with the recruiting class. Dogs for sure. Thanks, guys, for the input. Absolutely, man. Yes, Appreciate you. Emmanuel, hit that like button, please. Join the USCJ membership channel. Emmanuel's a member. Anybody has that little circle on there, they're a member. And uh, Emmanuel's been tapped in with me since day one, man. I I, I got to show big love to Emmanuel, man. Emmanuel, man, when are you coming on, man? I want to hear your input. You you say some credible, dynamic comments. I want to hear you um, your actual uh, uh, what you got to say on camera. Um, he's a real one. Absolutely. I appreciate you, man. He shows genuine love. Thank you yes, very, sir. very much, man. He's not even up for the money. Absolutely. I'm not even for the money, man. And that's the absolute truth. Um, yeah. appreciate everybody, man. So Emmanuel, get with me, man. If you're not on Instagram or, or, uh, Twitter, I want you to be the next one, man, to come on, man. Let me know if you can. All right. So look, man, I'm out of here. Jay, JC, it took, we've been on here 50 minutes. Anything yes, you want to say, we just talked about the recruiting class. We covered the expectations. We covered uh, the sleeper players. We covered yeah. uh, pretty much everything, man. So what are your last things you want to say before we get up out of here, man? No, well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for having me on your platform today, man. You, you're doing great things out here. Your love and passion for USC is, 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 is there, man. I love it. And, you know, I'm excited about this upcoming season. And um, fight on, brother. That's all I can say. Fight on. Like, share, subscribe. Absolutely. This won't be your last time. I tell you that. Yes, uh, and, and so look, man, we definitely, definitely appreciate. That's his name. Yeah. Jay Tyler, yeah. That's his name. You're absolutely yeah. right. Thank yeah. you for uh, for bringing that up. I don't know if he's still there. He might as well come on back, man. They're not doing that over there. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> look, <man. laughs> hey, uh, hey. so look, man, hey, appreciate Tim. Appreciate you, man. I'll tap in with you on yeah, Friday, thanks, man. Tim. I'll see you guys. I'm gonna call in on Friday. Tim, don't have me on hold a long time, man. All right, man. <laughs> don't have me on hold, man. All right. But I'm going to tap in with you Friday, Tim. Appreciate yes, you, sir. brother. Appreciate you. Oscar, the trainer's left. Absolutely, man. Emmanuel, yes, sir, Jay. Only have email. I kind of stay away from. Hey, so listen. Check this out. Yeah, you good. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to give you the email. <coughs> I hit you. I hit you in more one of my comments. I hit you in one of my comments. And so, look, man, I'm out of here, man. Until later on, listen, everybody, stay blessed, man. Fight on, fight on, fight on.